nation against nation brother against welcome again to this broadcast this is deliverance church uh, langata and these are current issues and uh, my name is Onesmus uh, where I'm standing in because uh, Bishop Dr. Njuguna, the official host, is uh, out of the country for now. And uh, this has to go on. I've been a co-host uh, with Dr. Njuguna for long. And so I, I don't think this will be a very um, a challenging uh, position to be in uh, with me here. But I have a council uh, Buona Mongale here today. Uh, thank welcome, welcome Santa. to the program, thank and uh, and thank you very much for coming in. Thank we, you. We we normally get into current issues, mm -hmm. and uh, these current issues are issues from a Christian perspective. How we should respond mm -hmm. and in, in eject our contribution into society mm -hmm. so that we are able to develop and to grow together. Of course, the Bible says that we are ambassadors of Christ. Mm -hmm. We reconcile people. We do all those kind of things like that. To begin us off today, uh, I just want to thank the Kingdom TV for hosting this and for making it um, um, practically being able to get all over the country. Thank you so very much for that. This evening, we want to focus on the government and, Christ and Christianity, the role of Christians. The Bible says in Romans 13 verse number one, let everyone be subject to the governing authority. For there is no authority except that which God has established, that the authority that exists has been established by God. Those words, Bona Mongale, mm. as a governance consultant and a lawyer in this great nation, mm. as a Christian, practicing Christian, uh, some time ago in one of our uh, discussions, our interviews here, I remember you saying that uh, the problem we don't stand still and, and strong, mm. and uh, you even alluded to the fact of cost, mm. that uh, we need to look at the, the cost of saying the truth yes. or telling the truth mm. to, to these people, and, and sometimes we fear. Mm. But come to think of it, in this country, we see a certain tendency, mm. a certain behavior, almost a culture of Kenya throughout independence mm -hmm. every after elections. The politicians will do their thing because they are politicians mm. and they are out there to politic and they don't have to agree necessarily. Mm. But uh, the Bible in the book of Romans seems to talk about uh, that uh, everyone must be subject to governing authority. Mm -hmm. There is no authority that has not been uh, put there by God himself. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wonder what that means mm -hmm. from a person of your profession and legal mind. Because every year, every year in our country, mm -hmm. we see that uh, when we, we, we have elections and these people have lost and this one have won, sometimes the ones who have won, they celebrate without the other ones who have lost. Mm. And sometimes the one who have lost, they completely refuse to accept mm. that they lost. Mm. And we have always had battles. But the church needs to come to a point where this kind of a statement, let everyone be mm. subject to the governing authority, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Mm. The authority that exists, the authority that exists, yes. has been established by God. Mm. We as Christians, how do you see us responding to this kind of instruction mm. from your legal <laughs> position? Um, it is indeed true, as, as the word says, that uh, there is no authority that is given uh, or there is no authority that is exercised that is not of God. Yeah. And that means that even evil kings uh, exercise authority 
and that authority is God's authority. Uh, there is no one who uh, was born and then, uh, you know, manufactured authority to wield on, on, on their own. And uh, when, when the word says that um, everyone should be subject uh, to authority, it means that first you are honoring uh, the very fact that uh, that authority is God's. That the human being who is in that office, the human being who is operating as a king, who is operating as a leader, is doing so because they are they are exercising something that they have been given by God. Yeah. Whether they were put in place by, uh, you know, the, the vote of, uh, you know, human minds and human hands, mm -hmm. the very authority they are wielding is God's authority. So uh, the, the, when, when, when uh, the Bible is saying that uh, we ought to be subject to authority, we are not just subjecting ourselves to the leader. I think that is a mistake that most people make, that when you are recognizing authority, you are recognizing the leader or you are submitting yourself to the leader. Mm -hmm. Number one, you are submitting yourself to the Lord. That is principally it. You are submitting yourself to the authority and the rulership of the Lord. Because it is by the Lord that, you know, we, we are first alive. And number two, that people are actually leading and exercising, uh, you know, uh, their capacity in leadership. Number two, when it comes to uh, our scenario as, as, as Kenyans, uh, and what you have described, that we, after elections, you have uh, certain individuals that do not now recognize the leadership in place. Yeah. I think... Uh, and this is um, a bitter truth, that um, certain individuals have taken advantage of uh, our broken systems over time. Because it, it is no secret that, uh, you know, in the years past, um, uh, you know, the government of the day would rig elections. Uh, that, that was, uh, it, it was clear. Yeah. Uh, whoever was in power would make sure that they would do everything to stay in power. And then after a certain uh, period of time, uh, somebody looked at it and said, ah, okay, now that uh, this is the way to go, every time uh, an election happens, yeah. uh, whether I have lost uh, uh, truly or not, mm. because the system has been broken over time, if I say the system was, was broken, then... Uh, you know, people will believe me. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to, you know, uh, discount uh, the grievances of people who have truly uh, been oppressed by, you know, a broken system. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that um, it, it is not good to take advantage of, uh, you know, uh, the place that we have found ourselves in as Kenyans. Number two, we've had grievances. Uh, in the past, we talked about the inequalities around, around the country, uh, the fact that resources were not distributed evenly. Mm -hmm. There are some regions, uh, historically, uh, because of certain political differences, some regions that were marginalized. And, and just to be specific, you had the coast region, for example, that was left behind. You had um, uh, the whole of uh, what used to be called uh, Cavirondo, mm -hmm. uh, north and uh, in south Cavirondo. Yeah. Now we know it as um, as as, as uh, Nyanza and Luo Nyanza, mm. and then you had parts of uh, Northeastern yeah. that were extremely marginalized by the political actors mm. then. So um, these are real grievances. However, it becomes unfortunate when certain political actors take advantage of these grievances and carry them as political currency. Uh, that is a problem. Mm. Because if, for example, you have gone through uh, an election and, um, you know, somebody else uh, has been declared as, as winner in that election uh, and you are grieved, you have gone through the systems and uh, the systems that we have set in place for ourselves and the systems have decided that, yes, this person who was elected is the one who should, uh, who should govern. If you take advantage of the grievances of the people, which are true, because the fact that people have been marginalized is true. Uh, the fact that development has not been going on in some regions, that is true. But if you take advantage of that um, scenario and those circumstances and use those circumstances as political currency, uh, you know, use that as a bargaining chip, yeah then uh, that is, is not deserving of leadership, uh, I, I must say. Because we find ourselves in that scenario. I'm not just talking about, you know, the yeah. presidential candidates. Yeah. We've yeah. seen that in, in the gubernatorial elections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have um, a certain uh, candidate for governor who comes from a certain small tribe within that county. And because, you know, he hasn't gotten elected, he will whip up emotions of his, uh, the tribe he comes from. And then it becomes a tribal issue. 
that is the problem we, we have been having, that, uh, you know, leadership has been uh, ethnocentric. Uh, you know, ethnicity is a good thing. Uh, the fact that we come from different ethnic uh, communities is a good thing. But when we become ethnocentric, when we, uh, you know, start pulling towards, uh, you know, our tribes as, of, you know, against others, that becomes a problem. So uh, back to the point of um, us being subject uh, to authority. Mm. Uh, the Christian first, now that we are zeroing in on, on the Christian, the Christian must be subject to authority as an honor to God and in recognition that it is God who wields the ultimate rulership over this world. Yeah, mm. yeah. You see, you see, it's very interesting. Mm. Uh, I, I really like what you're saying, that uh, it is not necessarily mm. uh, aligning or subjecting yourself to the leader, mm. but as subjecting yourself to, to God mm. and realizing that God has given that leader mm. the authority to be the one who is leading that country or that nation. Mm. And therefore, as Christians, I, in, in our earlier interviews uh, mm. with you, I remember us talking about the role of, a, of, of Christians mm. in this matter. But I want even to bring out a little bit, because when, when you look at that uh, section mm. that we, re we read a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. if you go to verse, the second verse, it says like this, mm. consequently, mm. whoever rebels against the authority mm. is rebelling against God, uh, is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment mm. on themselves. Mm. So, when, when you look at uh, rebelling, mm. rising against, what, what, what would you see as a rebellion in the whole idea of those who rebel against the authority, mm. that's the authority of God, I do understand pretty, uh, pretty much. Mm. But you see, we normally talk it about even here in the church, uh, mm. Deliverance Church, for example, the, uh, Langata here where this broadcast is taking uh, place, mm. there is a shepherd here, a pastor here, a lead mm. pastor, that's Dr. Juguna. Mm. And so the, the, the authority, that's the authority constituted here. There is a way that authority and the congregation mm. has, a, has a kind of a degree of relationship. Mm. Where would you say is the line where the person and God is, uh, is distinct? Mm -hmm. Where should we draw the line? Because there are some times when, as you have said, because of our own selfish ends, we draw the lines very quickly mm. like that. So where would you draw the line so that uh, right now we, we have the president mm. and we have the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we are talking about Christians, but uh, again, I, say, uh, I would say confidently without mm. fear of contradiction, Christianity, people who claim to be Christians would be 70% plus. Mm. And so we expect their leaders to be able to, to lead them to a direction that is clearly the truth, the, the, the virtues that mm. God desires to see uh, a nation mm. having the respect of God, respect of one another, mm. respect of the rule of law, uh, helping those who are marginalized or are poor, mm. things like that. But uh, in the political class, we, with, with the entire noise, it's mm. like we are lost in the noise mm. and we fail to act. Mm -hmm. From where you stand, uh, Council uh, Mwangale, as a Christian and um, a person who is actually in that space mm. where you can give consultancy on on, on matters law. Where, where, where do we draw the line? Let's say the leader, mm. right in Kenya practically right now, mm. the, the church is coming up very clearly. We are praying for the president, we are praying for this and that. Mm. But uh, we keep seeing a few dramas here and there up mm. to a point where we are lost yeah, yeah. for words. Where are you, uh, mm. guys? When do you draw this line where the word says, consequently, those who rebelled against authority, mm. when is this authority and when is this person? Uh, what, what, what would be your discourse along those mm. thoughts? I, I think the line is drawn, yeah. uh, and I would still borrow from um, the same Romans, um, chapter 13. Mm -hmm. uh, from verse 4, 5 onwards, um, the Bible says that uh, for uh, the leaders or the authority is given for your good. And, uh, and for me, that is where the line is drawn, uh -huh. that the authority and the leadership is exercised for the good of the people of God. 
once uh, that uh, authority or the leadership uh, is now exercised away, if it is now not for the good of the people, then it becomes a problem. That is where now you start pointing to the person and saying, no, you're not doing uh, you know what this authority was supposed to do. Yeah. You are not doing good to the people. You are not uh, doing justice uh, to the people. That is where the line is drawn. But then the answer to a king who uh, is is not uh, you know doing justice or is not doing good to the people is not to depose the king. It is not to rebel you know against the king mm. uh, because unless unless that rebellion has been sanctioned by the lord and, and that <laughs> that that means that the lord has stirred up the hearts of the people mm. uh, so to depose a king uh, it is the lord uh, the lord's doing because he's, it's his authority mm. it is his rulership so for you to depose the rulership of God, it is God himself who must decide that now uh, this thing has to go uh, because this man is not uh, doing uh, what uh, he's supposed to do to the people. But, uh, you know, just like we have set up in our own systems, we have certain institutions that, you know, uh, if you are grieved, uh, go to this place. If this place rules, still rules against you, appeal to this place. Still, even when uh, you have a king who is not serving justice or serving good to the people, uh, the Bible says that uh, the hearts of, of kings is in the Lord's hands for him to guide and uh, to lead as he wills. Uh, you know, just like he would uh, guide the rivers in the deserts, uh, the Lord can still you know, mm. act on uh, the hearts of, of, of the king. So the recourse for the Christian uh, in the case where, you know, a ruler, a leader, or a king departs from good, departs from justice, is to go back to the owner of the authority and tell the owner of the authority, change the heart of this man. Uh, this man has departed from the good that you sanctioned. Mm. This man has departed from doing justice. And that is why uh, we are encouraged uh, to pray for those in authority, to pray for leaders. Because just um, uh, the mere fact that, um, you know, they are human beings, they are bound to stray uh, from the path uh, that God has, uh, has, has set for them. And, and because we are still uh, of that fallen nature, it is very possible. And leaders, I mean, have a high propensity to fall away from the path more than, you know, those who are not uh, in leadership. People forget that, by the way. It is easy to point a finger at the person who is, who is in leadership and in authority. But uh, uh, sometimes we forget that if we were in similar positions, uh, we would probably be worse. <laughs> We'd probably be worse. Yeah. So um, the, the, the first responsibility of the Christian to their leader is to present them uh, before the Lord. Even before they get, you know, you discover that they have gone away from the path, is to continually commit them uh, to the Lord, to pray that the Lord, you know, guides and leads their hearts. But that said, uh, there are people who um, still may be hard-hearted, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and in, in those instances, uh, the Lord may stab the people's hearts, uh, you know, to rise up against a king or against a leader. But I must insist that rebellion against a king, at least in my uh, Christian understanding, has to be sanctioned by the Lord. Mm. So the Christian must be very careful, and that's why I, I mentioned before that the first responsibility of the church in, in the age of modern governance and politics is to listen to the Lord. Yeah. What is the Lord saying about this leader? Mm. Uh, what, because, you see, um, uh, you know, I had a discussion with some friends of mine about, uh, you know, tough economic crimes, and this, this was last year. And I was telling them, we may pray that, uh, you know, the Lord makes things easy. But what if uh, it is the Lord's plan that, uh, you know, uh, as he says, in, as, as, as Peter says, that uh, rejoice uh, because uh, for a little while you are going through manifold <laughs> <laughs> temptations and heaviness. Yeah. Uh, what if the Lord has decided that mm. uh, we go through this wilderness, uh, you know, experience? And if the Lord has decided, we may pray ourselves out. But he has decided that my people will have to go through this wilderness uh, because there is something I have seen 
uh, that should wear out uh, from them. So I still insist that uh, the first responsibility is to listen to the Lord, and that will inform how to pray, because if you do not know what to pray, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the Lord about a leader, uh, you'll just pray generally. Uh, but the leader may have personal issues that need, you know, to be attended to, issues yeah. that could then yeah. spill over yeah. and then now become an, uh, you know, uh, you know, an issue about their leadership authority and how they govern. And number two, uh, to also listen to uh, the direction the Lord wants a society to go. Uh, and, and that means that we have to be in touch with, uh, you know, uh, the prophetic. Because um, we cannot leave, uh, you know, leaders to their own designs. Uh, we, we must know where the Lord wants mm -hmm. this country to go, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than say, uh, this president is not taking us well. But what is the Lord saying? Where does the Lord want us to go? Perhaps he's taking us where the Lord wants us to go, but because we are not in touch with, you know, where God wants us to go and where his, his heart is, yeah. uh, we will revolt against, against mm. the leader. You know, you said, you said something there about mm. good, mm. For, the, for the good of. Yeah. And if the good is missing, mm. it is, uh, that is where you need to start drawing the line mm. if it's not for the good of so and so. Mm. But I was, a try, I, 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 I was I am wanting to go a little bit down here mm. and look at some of the things mm. that uh, the Bible, when this chapter was being written, mm. was trying to include, yes. uh, comparing with what we have today, for example, mm. in uh, the same Romans 13, 5, mm. therefore, mm. it is necessary to submit to the authority, not only because of possible punishment, yes. but also conscience. as a matter of conscience. Yes. But then continues to say something else. Mm. This is also why mm. you pay taxes. Mm. For the authorities are God's servants mm. Mm. who give their full time to governing. Mm. And, and you mentioned a little bit about a re rebellion to the king mm. will not re necessarily be, be the issue. Mm. I think the whole idea of, uh, uh, and, and I really want to hear, you know, uh, a person of your professional stature mm. should be able to divide the word of, the word of God mm. truthfully, rightly here, mm. practically on the ground, uh, so that things are uh, put in context. Mm. Because I feel like... Uh, we are so worried as mm. a nation. And yeah. the word worried is not very good. Mm. We say prayer changes things. And uh, you have mentioned prayer here. Mm. But uh, prayer, I don't think prayer changes things. Mm. Prayer changes me and you. Prayer changes people. God changes people mm. when they pray. Yeah. And then those people change things. Mm. And sometimes, you, you, as you have put it very, uh, very lightly, mm. the leader might be doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But if we are not reading from the same text, mm. the same page, the mm. same script together, we might be fighting mm. what God is leading us to do. Mm. Uh, a writer once said, a leader does not lead people where they want to go, mm. but mm. where they need, they need to, to go. go. Yes. And so the conscience mm. Is, is a critical thing here. Mm -hmm. When, 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 when uh, the Bible speaks of uh, don't only, not only because of the possible punishment that you should be responding, mm -hmm. but because of, as a matter of conscience, conscience. should be this yeah. and that. Mm -hmm. Then they talk of taxes. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about current affair, current issues here. Mm -hmm. the taxes is one of that very emotive issue. Yeah. I was preaching in a church this Sunday, mm -hmm. And I mentioned the taxes, and I almost look like I am part of a, a party and against <laughs> another a group yeah. of people. Yeah. And I wasn't. I was just sharing the word of God. Mm. So, do you really think that uh, life has been made very difficult mm. because of increasing taxes? Have, what is your, what's your understanding? Mm. And what is your understanding about these taxes mm. In, in, in your honest opinion, mm. in relationship to life today. Yeah. You know, as you answer that question, think about the time we prayed about the rain in this country. Mm. Mm. God answers prayers. Yeah. But more than prayers changing things, God changes people. Yeah. Right now, I, I know that the fertilizer 
has come down to 200, 2,500. Mm. But besides that, even if we had fertilizer and there was no rain, a farmer, even if he's changed by the prayer, will do nothing. Yeah. I was walking, and my God, there is a lot of green, a lot of nice mm. uh, wheat, maize, mm. everything else. Mm. So just, just in, in conclusion, I want you to address this matter mm. of taxes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first, let me begin by saying that any government, any individual, who would have come in uh, after the August uh, of 2022, uh, considering uh, the government that was there before, would have struggled in getting our economy stable. That is the truth that, you know, both uh, sides of the political divide in Kenya today, uh, you know, may not readily admit in public, but that is the truth. Practically, uh, any government would have struggled to get us stable. Yeah. Because, I mean, looking at our history, we, we have been very extravagant in, uh, uh, you know, with our resources. Uh, yes. That is a fact that we, yeah. you know, we really must, must accept. Yeah. So to get us to a place of stability, uh, it, it takes time. And that is what uh, I think um, most times people do not do not understand. You elected somebody into office, uh, and because uh, you know they are coming in with a new government, everything is new. They will have to get new people into certain positions uh, so that you know it, it takes time. Mm. Back to the issue of, of taxes. If you look at um, uh, countries that have the kind of systems of government that that we have, uh, they pay more taxes than we do. Uh, look, look at the Scandinavian countries, look at, uh, you know, some of the Western countries that are doing well. Uh, they pay more taxes than we do. Our issue has been how our taxes are utilized. So people feel the pinch because you are, you know, paying this amount of taxes, yet you will still pay health care, you will still, you know, pay this uh, for uh, this basic services. That, that is the issue. But on, on, on the issue of taxation, mm. I, I think if we borrow... Uh, you know, the systems of government elsewhere that are similar to ours, we pay lesser taxes. That, that, that we must, we must ag uh, accept. It is difficult to swallow for the person, you know, who feels <laughs> the pinch that, you know, they are paying more, yeah. uh, but that is the truth. Yeah. What needs to be done is that uh, the, na the, the level of services, the quality of services that we receive from government must be commensurate to the taxes we pay. That is the missing link, mm. that you are paying this much taxes, but then uh, you do not have roads in certain areas, that you have to pay so much in healthcare, you have to pay so much in education. That is the missing link. In other countries where you know, taxes are paid even more than we do, uh, education is free. Uh, healthcare is very much subsidized, the roads uh, of good quality and, and, and so on. So taxes are not an issue. The issue is when the taxes are excessive and they're only excessive if uh, they are not applied to where they are supposed to apply because we pay taxes uh, to not just to run government. You know, I think that is a misconception that we have that we pay taxes to pay people. No, we pay taxes uh, so that we do not have to, uh, you know, get into our pockets to pay for certain services. You do not need to go into your, your pocket again to build a road. You have already paid a tax that will provide those services. So, so should be there. Yes, if we want to get to a point of stability with the system of governance that we, we have, uh, we must be prepared to pay more taxes. Uh, it is unfortunate, uh, it's sad, but yeah, that is the truth. <laughs> I, I think that brings us to a wonderful, wonderful conclusion mm -hmm. that uh, the taxes we pay mm -hmm. and what the government does mm -hmm. to, to make life of the people better should really be commensurate yes. with that. And yes. so how we use the quality mm -hmm. of the use of that taxes yes. is a critical thing exactly. where we're living. And that brings us to a point mm -hmm. of our prayer. Mm -hmm. We pray mm -hmm. that... Uh, God will change some people mm. to change some things yes. in the how taxes are yes. used yes. so that everybody feels mm. that it's commensurate mm. to what they are doing. It's exactly. Paying taxes is okay and we should pay taxes, mm. but then we should also pray that God touches people. Mm. So I, I want you to, 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 to make a short prayer on that area even as we conclude because that, that's, really, yes. that's really where uh, mm. the, the, the issue is mm. on how mm. the quality of that service. Mm. Okay, let's pray. 
Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your love and for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for this country that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for your authority, the authority that you have just donated to us um, to exercise. Even to the leaders that we have elected, Lord, we thank you that they are even exercising this authority on your behalf uh, in this nation. And so, Father, we want to commit our leaders before you, our political leaders before you. We want to commit uh, the executive led by the president before you. We want to commit their hearts uh, to you, Jehovah, King of glory. We pray, Jehovah, Lord, that uh, even as uh, the hearts of kings is in your hands, Jehovah, my Father, for you to direct as you will. Lord, may you direct their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ.